Hello everyone, it's Becky here. So here is my current art journal. So I've been working on it since December last year. It's been like a month and a half now. And here are some of the pages. So I sketch almost every day in my art journal. I've been doing that for about nine years now. And today in this video, I'm going to show you how I composed this spread. So I finished um, this spread in a span of four days. So I started with this sketch of onions and peppers first. And then I did this sketch of cauliflowers and pumpkin. And then the cleaners with gloves. And then finally, the pumpkin pie with tea. So I begin by drawing the simple general outline of the onion. And then filling in the inside blanks by adding the shape of the broken peel and the surface skin texture, the root, and the curves on the surface that suggest the three-dimensional feel of the onion. As you can see, I didn't change my 0.8 tip fineliner. I just pressed very lightly to draw the surface curves and the hatching lines. So when sketching, it's a good idea to sketch the things that are not being covered first and then sketch the things behind. So when doing these short hatching marks, I'm trying to follow the natural surface curve of these green peppers instead of using solid straight lines. And I think there's no need to do like a lot of hatching and cross hatching marks for sketch. And I'm just like doing hatching for the darkest parts of the, these green peppers. and adding a background so these vegetables pop out from the page. Now I'm ready to paint with my watercolors. So I wet the areas first with clear water before adding colors. And the first layer is very light and watery. For the onion, it's like a light wash of mix of yellow ochre and a little bit burnt sienna. For the first layer, it's really important to keep it light because we'll have more control. It's really hard to change when you start very darkly. And for the green peppers, a very light wash of radiant green mixed with some yellow ochre. Now the first layer of the onions are dried a bit. I'm adding the second layer. It's a mix of orange and burnt sienna. And still, I'm trying to keep it medium light. Now for the third layer, it's medium dark color. It's a mix of more burnt sienna and a bit less orange in the mix. And notice that I'm leaving some highlights.
Now I'm painting the second layer for these hot peppers. Um, so it's kind of a medium green. Again, I'm leaving some highlight streaks for the surface of these peppers. And for the third layer of these green peppers, I'm mixing some burnt sienna into the radiant green or some ultramarine blue, depending on the shade of the green. So I like doing multiple layers of watercolors because the different layers are really giving like interest to the sketch and gives more life to the objects and sceneries. Now I think it's the fourth layer of the onion. I'm trying to see more shade on the surface and adding the color to the right places. So now the room is really bright, the lighting is pretty good, so there are not very many spots that are really dark. So when we're gradually adding darker colors or shades on the surfaces, just make sure we don't overdo it. And when we're painting, we have to be brave enough to be able to add those small areas of dark shades to give contrast to the painting. The contrast in a piece of painting is really, really important to give life to the art. Now I'm adding shadows to these veggies. Again, the first layer of shadows is quite watery. It's like a mix of ultramarine blue and purple. And now I'm adding the darker shades around the edges of these veggies and just let the colors wet on wet. And the next day in the afternoon, as a way to relax, I'm ready to sketch some cauliflowers and the pumpkin. So I'm sketching this cauliflower in the forefront first, covering the other vegetables. I'm sketching with the, uh, with the middle part, the circular, the root part, and then the stems coming out from the middle. I think this way I have a more easier control. After drawing the stems, I'm starting to draw the flowers, starting with the one near the stem and then build it up one after another. And in order to draw faster, I'm trying to see these things in an abstract way, as I talked before in my other uh, sketching tutorials. So I'm trying to see these as corals, as organic stuff, instead of seeing cauliflowers. Because the more I'm stressing on seeing and drawing cauliflowers, um, the more nervous I get. So I'm just trying to relax and see the abstract shapes in front of me. And drawing this cauliflower really reminds me of sketching trees and bushes when I was able to go out before the COVID pandemic. So for people who are just beginning to sketch and draw and paint, I think it's really important to start with these simple still life objects before venturing out to sketch landscapes. Because here you have one complex subject matter, but in the landscape you have multiple complex sub sub subject matters like this, and it could be really overwhelming.
Now I'm going to draw the pumpkin that is behind this cauliflower. Here in art, we call it overlapping. And I'm drawing the stripes on this green pumpkin to show its 3D dimension better. So again, wetting the areas first with clear water before putting paint on. The, the first layer is the lightest, quite watery. It's like a mix of yellow and light green. And after the first layer dries a bit, I'm adding the second layer, which is a little bit darker for the stem of the cauliflower. So it's a mix of viridian green with a bit of yellow. As you can see, I did not completely cover the first layer. I'm leaving some areas. So it looks like the stem is shining. And for the second layer of the pumpkin, it's a mix of viridian green and burnt sienna, leaving out the stripes. And at the same time, keep darkening the shade areas of the cauliflower. Now there's a quite strong contrast here in this sketch. So I decided to paint a platform so these veggies can stand out better from the page. So as watercolor dries, the colors tend to fade away. So I'm adding another layer after that layer is dried. So when we want to add a really dark layer, just make sure the previous layer is quite completely dried. Otherwise, the new layer of color could fade away too. So one of the key ideas of working with watercolors is not to work way too fast sometimes. And doing some final polish. And now painting the shadow. So instead of painting a solid shadow, I like my shadows to have a bit of gradients. So the areas closer to the edges are the darkest and then spreading out this lighter. And the next day, I decided to sketch the household cleaners and the rubber gloves in my art journal. So I began by drawing the tallest object here, this uh, soap bottle. Just make sure that everything else can fit on the uh, page space. And I decided to draw a frame because I don't want the gloves to be um, kind of fighting the space with the vegetables down there. So now I'm seeing and observing the folds, the up, the up and downs on the gloves and doing some hatching. drawing and um, shading the inside of this soap bottle. So when I'm drawing, I'm always drawing things in relationship to each other. So I never make huge mistakes. So I decided to paint the background first, or the negative space in this picture. I wetted the area first with clear water, and I'm adding kind of like abstract blocks of colors. So this is actually the wooden floor behind. And because the soap bottle is transparent, some of the uh, wooden floor color is coming through.
So now I'm painting the balcony door on the corner of this sketch and then leaving some white space there because I want this sketch to have like a breathing space. So for the shade of something yellow, it's good to make the shadow more bluish because the complementary color of yellow is blue. And when adding the colors of the soap, I'm using kind of different pressures to control the intensity of the paint. And adding about two layers to give contrast to the color of the soap and the color of the transparent bottle. So I really like the, lab the yellow label parts on this cleaner jar because it kind of matches with the uh, color of the gloves. It's kind of like in harmony. And the green part of this jar is in harmony with the color of the soap. And now this red is like very different from the rest of the colors. It's really kind of gives life to this whole sketch. and adding another layer of darker green to give more contrast. And here I'm gonna call it done. And the next day I'm having pumpkin pie and tea for my afternoon snacks. And I'm gonna sketch it right there. So the shape of this cup is kind of different from the, the other cups is a rectangular prism. And the shape of this little dish is kind of interesting too. So when we're drawing cups and dishes, make sure we draw the outline of the rim. And I especially like adding more hatching lines for simple subject matters like this cup and the pumpkin pie, just to give more interest to the sketch. And I decided to paint a platform first for this, for these two sets. Today is a sunny day and I want to paint the color of the grass in the sunshine as I see outside my window. Doing some wet on wet. And for these food items, I'm wetting the areas first with clear water and adding the lightest color, which is a mix of yellow and yellow ochre.
So when we're painting something ceramic, just make sure we leave some streaks or spots white just to keep the highlights there. And the surface texture of the pumpkin pie is a little bit of shiny with some small tiny streaks and I'm saving those spots white. And adding a new layer of a mix of burnt sienna and the blue to give contrast to the pumpkin pie. And adding some light shades for the inside of this little dish for the bottom too. And adding the shadows very quickly. So thank you so much for watching my video. If you like my videos, please click like and leave me a comment below. You can subscribe to my channel for weekly updates. And you can follow me on Instagram to keep track of my daily updates of my art journal. And I will see you next time very soon.